Good afternoon to all of you and my respectful pronouns from India. I feel I am reasonably fortunate and, and blessed to send this message to you from the foothills of mighty Himalayas and from the sacred and uh, serene surroundings of Shanti Kunjaritwa, from the Tapastali of Parampuji Gurudev, where divine vibrations of his presence can be felt at each and every step. But I am equally aware that this message is reaching to you in one of the most uh, adverse and critical and difficult times. These are kind of times when the existence of entire humanity is facing a threat from almost all possible directions, from global pandemic to raging fires to barood blasts to volcanic eruptions. There are challenges coming from all possible directions. And in these reasonably challenging times when all we hear are the echoes of pain and suffering, sorrow and grief. Our collective prayers to Magayatri for the betterment of humanity and upliftment of human consciousness becomes more important than ever before. Prayer to Magayatri is always important but in these critical times it becomes even more more important and I am delighted not only me, but every single Karikarata of Shanti Kunj is delighted. Shraddha Daksa, Shraddha Jiji are sending their blessings. That uh, youth of Northern America, youth of Canada, are organizing this virtual youth camp to think about the betterment of humanity. And uh, they are also sending their prayers to every single person who is suffering in these challenging times. Besides these prayers, I would like to bring your attention to an exceptional worldview, talking about which I believe is very important in the current critical times. And I believe that that worldview has started to develop all across the globe in the last uh, 200 years or so. Even if we are unable to see that happening in front of our naked eyes, because that kind of change does not take place every day, it is a collective transformation that has taken place in the last century. We can easily witness the signature of that paradigm shift in the global consciousness in each and every corner of the world. No matter where you go and no matter to whom you speak to, you can feel that shift. And the shift that I am referring to, it has started to become much more visible and much more apparent when we started to advance more in the fields of science and technology. Because as we started to progress outwardly in the external world, somehow we started to neglect our inner contentment and the outcome is obvious. We have got money but satisfaction is gone. And the scenes of chaos and confusion and conflict and dissatisfaction and anarchy, they have started to become much more noticeable than ever before. I am not saying that they are only happening now, but they started to become much more noticeable than ever before because the rift between external growth and the inner uh, vacuum is much more visible than ever before. We don't have to be a Nobel laureate to notice that the pain and suffering and stress and tension and anguish that each and every individual is being subjected to these days. That kind of stress, that kind of anguish, that kind of agony was not even there at the battlefields of last century or even at the time of Mahabharata or Ram Ravana Yuddha. This world of technological supremacy where we have got comfort at our fingertips that we have now fashioned for ourselves. It is built at a cost of disoriented human aspiration and loss of inner bliss. Money and prosperity have come, no doubt, but it came at a cost of satisfaction and contentment. On one hand, we have got huge houses, colossal houses, palatial houses than ever before, but families are gone. Who is living there? We have reached to the moon, but forgotten ourselves. And worst of all, we have populated the planet but annihilated the humanity. This is the reality of the world where we are struggling to find compassion and greed has become the mantra for success. Did we really want this kind of world? 
is this what we were looking for and this happened because for long we have been dreaming a dream a dream from which we are hopefully waking up i can't say that we have woken up right now but we are hopefully waking up the dream that if we just give money to every single soul if we just improve the socio economic status of the people if everyone can have money power position whatever they wish to have then they would be miraculously happy that's what everyone thought when people did not have money that's what they desired for but now when we have it we know that the truth is different as the struggle for survival has subsided the real questions of the life they started to become much more apparent than ever before the survival for what now people have means to live but no meaning to live for i remember that like you know um, talking to a boy and he said that this is the first time he got everything money he's got plenty he's living in london and he's got such a uh, strong elite background and he he was saying that the only reason i'm struggling because i can't really figure out that whether my presence is making a difference in the journey of humanity people are really searching for the meaning and this is the world view that i'm talking about this emerging world view is based on a central perception and the central perception comes from the teaching and ethos of all major religions of the world remembering from socrates when he wrote on the temple of athena that know thyself first remember who you are and everyone nowadays is trying to find the meaning and purpose behind this adventure that we call as the human life because we can have everything else we can have all that we desire for but if our purpose is our meaning if our uh, direction that we are trying to choose for our life that is missing then whatever we do would remain futile it would be absolutely meaningless it would be absolutely purposeless and these are the salient spiritual teachings of the world this is the teaching of every single verse of the vedas and upanishad which is to remind us that we as human beings remember this we as human beings are born with the capabilities and possibilities and potentials for a greater life than most of us would ever realize we try to find the beauty of our life in a phone eyes are more important if eyes are gone that phone is of no importance whatsoever we are trying to find the beauty in in the luxury but that is only dependent upon what we have if that is gone then everything is gone and we know that as human beings we have got possibilities to reach to the summits that not even possible for us to fathom right now even if we cannot find a scientific proof to validate it we can always feel deep in our hearts a sacred connection that we come from a higher and supreme consciousness we can always perceive this divine potential and we can always sense that our existence is unfolding from a higher and supreme and divine and transcendental source and our lives they are carrying an unmanifested purpose which gurudev called as the latent divinity manushya mein devatva ka udaya dharti par swarga ka utaran he said that we are as human beings somewhere in between if we start to descend in our lives we could be just like an animal we our life's pursuit would be limited to primal passions and desires that's it feeding ourselves and increasing the size of the family is there anything more than that i am doing no so one possibility is that but another possibility is higher up there if we start to descend in our lives we could be so bad that there would be no difference between i and an animal both would be the same but if i start to go up higher in my life in my pursuit in my aspirations then i could be so full of light and bliss that there would be no difference between i and the divinity that's the beauty of human life it is somewhere in between we are the bridge between a pashu and a parmatma we start to go down we could become a holy man we start to go up we can be buddha we start to go down we could be a very very bad soul we start to go up we could be gurudev and gurudev reminded us that we have that kind of possibility every human being is full 
of this divine possibility. You remember, you come to the Shanti Kunj, and in Shanti Kunj, you go to the Gayatri temple. In Gayatri temple, next to the Gayatri temple, he arranged the mirrors. Why? Because he said, pay the homage to my Gayatri, but don't forget that there is also a God inside you. Pay the respect to the God there, but don't forget the God. Don't forget the divinity. Don't forget the supreme consciousness that you are representative of on this planet. Remembering that is the purpose of human life. The message from Gurudev's teaching is crystal clear. Messages that if we feel misplaced, if we feel unsatiated, if we feel unsatisfied, it's not because our desires are unfulfilled. That's what everyone thinks. It is because we are yet to discover our true identity, our real identity, our divine identity. And we would continue to feel like that till we have accomplished what we are born to accomplish. But there is also something very important in that relation. Very, very important. And that is to remember that this imperfection that we feel, this shall not worry us. Because all of us are feeling a kind of something missing, something missing inside. And that something missing should not worry us. We should feel it more like a privilege, more like a promise. Because it confirms that in us, a divine force is still trying to manifest itself. There is a, there is a sacred consciousness that is still trying to discover its spirit. We are only lost because we are running in the wrong direction. We are trying to find it in the objects that would be gone along with us. I won't be here. So these objects won't be of any use to us either. But we are running after them. You remember the story of the farmer in Siberia that Gorky has written and it's beauty, beautiful story. The stories of a man who heard that like, you know, if you go to Siberia, they're in a village, they're giving land for free. Who wouldn't want to have that? So he said, okay, I will go and get the land for free. I will get as much as land I want. Went to the elder of the village. He said, are you giving land for free? He said, absolutely free. He said, what do I have to do to get it? He said, nothing, absolutely nothing. Wait for sun to rise. We give you four flags. He said, run with the four flags. I was trying to look for the flags. He said, run, run with the flags. And as far as you can go, go and plant one. North, east another one, west another one, south we are waiting for you. Whatever land you will cover till sunset belongs to you. But just you have to plant these four flags. He said, that's it. Elder of the village said, that's it. He said, how come no one has won it so far? He said, you run tomorrow morning, you will know. That's the run of your life. Fine. Next day morning, he started to run. More he ran, more greedy he became. All the greed of inside started to come. All this land belongs to me. All this, whatever I see belongs to me. Unlimited land, all belongs to me. So he thought, if I have to run on one day, why am I getting the food? Threw away his lunch. Why am I getting the water? Got rid of the water. So why am I running with clothes? Got rid of the clothes. I can go far. He wanted to have as much as possible. Two o'clock he remembered that I was supposed to plant a flag. This story of the farmer is a story of most of us. People are running. And more they run, more greedy they become. Oh, why I should limit myself to associate professor. I can be professor. I can be the head. I can be the dean. I can be the vice chancellor. I can be the education minister. There is no end to it. Keep running. So he remembered. Two o'clock he planted one, went to the east side, went to the west side. And Gorky has written that sun was setting. Energy was gone. He had no energy left because food, he did not have it. He was running without water, thirsty, hungry and without clothes in Siberia. Collapsed, collapsed but six feet before the finish line. Sun was gone. 
when he regained the consciousness there were people standing all were clapping they said oh you came too far my dear friend you came too far all other became so greedy they never returned they are still planting the flags and he still had a little bit of greed inside so he said what would i get like you know uh, for coming this far what would you do with this piece of land that is left between my fingertips and the finish line he thought they maybe they will gift it to me for free and gorki has written that the elder of the village said oh, we are waiting for you to die we will bury you there that's the only land you take he called this story 6 feet underground we are running we can never run faster than the death itself all races they end at the chitta or cemetery so we are running we run because everyone else is running and then we think we did not get it because probably we did not run fast enough or maybe the speed needs to be increased or the direction needs to be changed it never occurs to us that we are we are trying to search for or what we are trying to run for it is inside us and for that we would need to stop and dwell within like the story of the buddha when anguli mal was trying to reach to him he could not reach you remember the story that anguli means finger mal means pendant so he was chopping the fingers off and making a pendant and when he was trying to kill lord buddha bhagwan buddha he was running after him and one version of the story says that no matter how hard he tried he could never reach to lord buddha so he became very agitated and he shouted at lord buddha he said hey monk where are you running buddha laughed buddha said who is running i stopped long time ago that's why he was called buddha buddha man means the one who has found himself so he said to angli man who is running i stopped long time ago we all have to stop if not in this life then in some other life and the moment we stop this futile purposeless race where we have become part of the race we don't even realize other person has got a beautiful phone my phone starts to become ugly to me other person has got a wonderful house my house starts to become smaller to me we become part of this we have to stop and we have to reconnect with what we truly are the moment we do that miracle happens we discover that we never lost it it was always there we had just forgotten it that's why when geeta finishes Arjun does not say that thanks for giving me so much beautiful knowledge. You taught me Gyan Yoga, Karma Yoga, Sannyas Yoga, Bhakti Yoga, all the great knowledge, Yagya to Bhakti. You talk talked about that. No, he says Smritir Labdha Mohanishto. That but one thanks for reminding me. I had forgotten what I was. Remembering our true identity is actually accomplishing the divine purpose. We are already divine. Just forget in that. What we essentially require is to discover the lost divinity within us, and then these experiences that we have, no matter how small and trivial and insignificant they are, they provide us with the glimpses of a luminous world beyond the range of our physical senses. These are the moments when our identity shifts. and we are lifted to a larger larger than anyone can ever imagine an encompassing sense of ourselves that upanishad says eko devah sarvabhuteshu goda sarvavyapi sarvabhuta antaratma same divine we see everywhere so vast tadai jati tannai jati tad dure tadantike tadantarasya sarvasya tadu sarvasya asya bahita Isha Vasya Upanishad says that he is inside everyone, he is outside everyone. You can never find it, you can never lose it. It's always there. This world that we have, which shares a common end, secret source, and a colossal journey. We just have to remember the great destiny that we 
and this world share and I hope that this opportunity of the virtual youth camp would allow you to reconnect with that possibility. Gurudev has taught us a beautiful message and the beautiful message is to remember the divinity within. The whole purpose of the Gaiti Parivar is Manushya Me Devattu Ka Udaya, Dharti Par Swaraka Udaya, remembering the divinity within and then bringing the heaven here because the heaven is gone nowhere and divinity is gone nowhere. The moment you are able to remember the divine within you, world would immediately transform into a heaven. The moment you become the Prime Minister, you don't have to wait for the Prime Minister residence. It is right there. The moment you are able to remember the divine within you, the world transforms into the heaven. And there was this great soul, Pujya Gurudev, who was able to give that direction to the humanity and no one else ever thought was possible. It is possible. It is possible and that divinity starts from you, me and everyone else. So I hope that this youth camp would offer such a possibility to you. Uh, this message when would reach to you, although I am recording it slightly sooner, would reach to you on the Independence Day of India. And that is the final freedom. Final freedom that in Upanishad and Vedanta and Sankhya and Darshan, we talk about Moksha, Sankhya, Nirvana, Kavalya, whichever way you would like to see it, that final freedom can only be accomplished when we are able to reconnect with the divine possibility that we all carry within ourselves. We just have to open the eyes. I end by sharing a beautiful anecdote of Gurudev. I remember that someone approached Gurudev and asked him that, Gurudev, do you believe in God? Gurudev said, no, I don't. And he said, no, you don't believe in God. Gurudev said, Beta, I know God. Believe is for you. So believe in divinity within yourself. And I hope that this youth camp would offer such a possibility to you. My utmost regard, sincere pronouns to all of you and also to the divine possibility that each of you carry within yourself. Humble pronouns from Shanti Bhandaradwar and my greatest respect to all of you. Our YouTube channel, Shanti Kunjak Video Gayatri Parivar, ko subscribe to our YouTube channel, Shanti Kunjak Video Gayatri Parivar, so that you can get the knowledge of the Gayatri Parivar.